YouTube, what the crap's going on? I guess it's a full-on throwback Thursday. Why not, though, right? Why not? We love Rome 2. Hey, so welcome to a tournament battle for Total War Rome 2. That's right, we're going to do a tournament battle here. This one is going to be Epirus facing off against Pergamon. And what should be a really cool battle, there are going to be, for the Epirote army, three Samnite warriors. They're mixed in with um, three Italian swordsmen mercenaries. Sorry, two Italian sword mercenaries. No, three. I was right the first time. My bad. Three. There, there's a cool. There's four cool units here. I love these units. Agriani and Axemen. They don't throw axes, but they do fight with them in melee. They have javelins, and they act as peltists, who then go into uh, combat with axes that do some decent armor piercing. A great uh, multi-role unit here. Let's go ahead and uh, hit slow motion so we can just catch all the units. There are a couple units of mercenary Italian spears on the flanks. There are two Thessalian cavalry on the back flanks, and then we have a Hellenic royal cavalry with the general, so very cool cavalrymen, a lot like companion cavalry. And then we've got a citizen cavalry here who think that they're cavalry, but they really just suck. Um, in any case, there's also four Tarantine cavalry roaming the flanks. So, remember in Rome 2 that Javelins, if I remember, I say remember, if I remember right, Javelins have a bonus versus Cavalry, so unless that's changed, um, all the Agriani and Axemen and the uh, Tarantine Cavalry here can be very effective at dealing damage to large units like Horsemen. So, we'll see how that plays out for them. Now, let's go look at the Pergamene army. Uh, up the middle, we're going to have several Galatian sword units. There's actually going to be four in total, and then I believe they are mixed in with three Agima Spears which are a medium spear unit, but they have pretty solid defensive stats. Not a ton of armor. Um, actually, it's this one. Decent armor, and then they're going to have uh, 59 melee defense. Uh, it's better than the Galatia Source. So I don't know if it's that great or not, because I can't honestly remember the numbers, but these guys, real quality is the fact that they carry javelins, and they can take a long time to die if you put them in a square formation. That's really their uses. Um, they're kind of like a buffed-up Thurio spear, if I remember right. And for the rest of the Pergamene army, there are two Pergamene noble cavalry here. And then there is another where the Pergamene general is located. And I don't know why I'm struggling to spot them right now. Right here. So three Pergamene noble cavalry in total. Two citizen cavalry. There are a couple of slingers here in the back. And there's also a couple of archers on those flanks. And they are being guarded, the flanks, by Galatian spears. The Pergamines do take a pretty commanding position hill, uh, here on the hill, based on the starting position for the map. And if I had to just kind of give you my quick overview of things, what I think will be some of the key units here. Um, I believe that uh, for the Epirotes, these three units of mercenary Samnite warriors are going to be a big deal. These uh, Samnite warriors have a ton of armor and solid melee defense, good shields. They don't have the best attack stats, but they're going to be a very good unit in terms of how well they can hold up a line. And quite honestly, the Pergamines aren't going to have a lot of armor piercing in their infantry, so I believe these Samnite Warriors are going to have to be tanky. If the Pergamine's going to effectively deal with the Samnite Warriors, he's going to have to do it with his Pergamine Noble Cavalry, which you're seeing here. Now let's zoom out and get you the uh, battle as the clash comes in. So infantry lines clashing. No charges from the Pergamine Noble Cavalry, who had numbers here, and I would have thought they would have used that uphill position to get some nice downhill charges into the front of the sword infantry. I was a little surprised not to see that. Now on this flank, the Agriani and Axemen immediately move around, and some of them, they should throw their javelins first for sure, but I mean, they're standing off against the Gima Spears, who also have javelins. So I guess they're going to go ahead into their melee role, and you're going to see them pull out their axes and head into melee. They'll do decent against the Agima Spears, but uh, then that draws a citizen cavalry over here. That's actually a good thing. These two citizen cav are not going to be all that good at killing Agriani and Axemen. And there's Italian Spears and more Axemen with their Javelins and some Tarantine Cav. Now we're going to see the Noble Cavalry activate. And over here there is a weakened unit of Italian Sword Mercenaries. Who are not faring well against the Galatian Swords, probably due to the charge. And that Heavy Shot Cavalry is going to bear in there and rout them. But then here comes the Hellenic Royal Cavalry countercharging, along with a Citizen Cav of their own. But then another Pergamene Noble Cavalry thrown into the fray here. So the Hellenic Royal Cavalry is starting to have to worry a little bit about the numbers game here. And as you can see, the Citizen Cavalry suffers badly for that attack on the Agrionians. And it gained them very little. Over here, the Thessalian Cavalry is going to just smash into a Thurio Spear. Now remember, the Thurio Spears do not brace when they are in fire at will. And Thessalian Cavalry has a massive charge bonus. It's a light cavalry. But they have a significant charge bonus, and they dealt some damage. 
They got 22 kills. And they're going to be able to continue to deal the damage. Though those Thurio Spears opening up with the uh, Javelins here. But again, as long as they're on fire at will, they will not be able to brace for this. And they're going to take tremendous damage because they're only a medium spear unit. And their armor is not that high. So the Thessalian Cavalry will score some big hits. The Pergamene Noble Cavalry and the Hellenic Cavalry have disengaged each other. But there's still more Noble Cavalry and Galatian Swords that have created a breakthrough. However, elsewhere along the lines, the breakthrough hasn't come just yet. These Agrionians are holding on, and they're getting countercharge help from the Thessalian cavalry. It is only a light cavalry, though, so it's only so much it can do here. And it's going to be better off to get through and get to those archers and slingers, which is exactly what it's doing. Over here, the Thessalians continued to cycle charge through the Thurio Spears, and they completely decimated it. They have 82 kills. So, very nice use of the mechanics of the game, knowing that that unit isn't braced. Um, he's going to slam into these archers here, but the Pergamene Noble Cavalry will counter charge. Another Pergamene Noble Cavalry put a hit attempt on the Hellenic Royal Cav, but they were outnumbered and behind lines, so it will not succeed. But the Pergamene Noble Cavalry, in the meantime, catching some Agrionian Axemen in the flank. However, it's not really a great charge. You gotta remember the flank charges on Rome 2 are not as good as just getting a solid rear charge, because not all of your units are connecting with that charge bonus. Tarantine Cavalry thrown into combat here. Maybe it's out of javelins, I'm not exactly sure. And early on I said that the tankiness of these Samnite Warriors is going to be key. And here it is. The Samnite Warriors are the ones still holding out the infantry line, whereas the Pergamene's infantry is struggling to cut through them. So, not really surprised by that outcome. And the Pergamines are going to have to make good use of their remaining noble cavalry if they want to succeed here. Their archers are being completely demolished by Thessalian cavalry, so they're going to lose their skirmish advantage here, which again, may have helped them even out this fight. Here comes a damaged Pergamene Noble Cavalry hoping to stop these Thessalians, and it's better than nothing, that's for sure. But I'm not sure it's enough to stop the Thessalians who are just on an absolute rampage. At this point, 128 kills on this one. Fantastic work for those light shock cavalry. I love shock cavalry in Rome 2. It's so gratifying if you use it right, but you do have to use it right. Some more Tarantine Cavalry being used here to intercept and slow down the Pergamene Cavalry. And again, just look at this. Samnite Warriors. Samnite's gonna tank, folks. And the Agrionian Axemen here. Look at this nice trade out here, too, where he's removing the tired and beaten down Agrionians from the fight. And then throwing in fresh reinforcements while these ones javelin these in the back. So very nice play by the Uprope player. And look at the kills on these Axemen. 123 in climbing. 67 kills on that unit. 54 over here. I love the use of the hybrid units. Definitely cool to see them get used well. Now the Hellenic Royal Cavalry is in pretty rough shape here. It's only got 16 units left and the Pergamene Noble Cavalry on the other hand still 33. It's picked up 118 kills so it has done some serious damage and it is gunning hard to take down the Epirote General. But at this point even if it does take down the Epirote General there's just nothing left for the Pergamenes to kill the Samnite Warriors. And I really think here that um, what this is going to come down to, and I know that there's still a little bit of time left in the battle, but as I said early on, the Samnites have the armor and the defensive capability to tank out significant damage from the Pergamene infantry. Uh, Galatian swords and other units, not going to do great. So the Pergamene noble cavalry really should have taken advantage of their numbers there and done that downhill charge and weakened up the Samnite warriors because the Samnite warriors ended up being... A beast, not a single one of them is routed. This one's even surrounded now, but it's not likely to route super quick. The Thessalian cavalry here is just gonna ruin the spear that attacked him in the back. The cavalry counter tactics here from the Galatian spears, but we'll see whether it works because the spears took a nasty charge there. Yep, they routed. Those Thessalian cavalry, 184 kills and counting. And here you can see again the Agema spears doing what they do, which is live a little bit longer <laughs> because of the square formation. That does brace them quite well, and it gives them an extra bonus to melee defense, I believe. So it will make them tanky, and it makes it to where it's hard to outflank them, but it won't save them. As you can see, it's going to be a costly victory. What a fun battle, too, between two fun factions here, the Pergamine, or Pergamon and Epirus. So, fun factions, both a lot of Greek influence there, though with a little bit of Galatian twist on the Pergamines, so it always makes that fun. I mean, I, I, I think the Pergamines' real advantage here was you had three heavy shock cavalry to only the one of uh, Epirus. Now, Epirus had an advantage in the sense that these Agrionian Hexmen 
presented a real serious double threat on the flanks in the sense that they can fight against spears pretty well and their javelins are really solid at taking down cavalry. Look at the tankiness of the Sam Knight warriors in the face of all the medium and light infantry that Pergamine fields. An excellent choice by the Uprope player in my opinion. And again, needed to be the focal point of Pergamon because if not, that main line's going to hold up and the rest of your army can't really do what it needs to do. That Thessalian cavalry was also a major threat on the flanks, and not being able to keep it away from the archers and slingers cost them a potential huge advantage here. If these units can get the late game, they can cause a ton of damage. A ton of damage, especially slingers, um, because they have a little bit more armor piercing than the archers in late game, so the slingers can just be brutal in late game, but they never made it there. But hey, great game between AC Moore and uh, B. B. Sean... I probably can't say it right, but um, uh, anyway, thank you to both players. It was really fun to watch. Thank you for submitting it. If you all enjoyed it, make sure and hit that like button too. How about that for Throwback Thursday, right? Try to provide you something unique, something nice. Let's do more of this. Um, so in any case, keep an eye out. Go join the Discord. I'm going to be uh, asking folks to come play battles with me, whether it's Warhammer 2, Rome 2, whatever the case is. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on the Discord. I'll be hopping on there from time to time this week. Also, I've got a very special stream tomorrow where I'm going to be introducing you to how to build your own com gaming computer, but not just that, how to build your own streaming computer where you can record and stream just like me. Make your own Total War videos or whatever videos you want to make. So I'm going to be teaching you first, introducing you to all the parts that you need to build it, and then I'll be making a second video to show you how to build it. And I'll be following that up with a third video of how to put all the software on it you need and how to record and upload to YouTube. It's going to be a really fun series. I love making videos for you all. And I think, you know, hey, this will be a cool way for me to, number one, help out my sponsor, MSI. But uh, more importantly, show you all that, hey, I got into streaming and gaming. All you need is a good gaming computer. And it doubles for both. And you really don't have much to lose. You're going to have a gaming computer anyway. And why not try to stream or record? If nothing works, you're none the worse off, and you've got a great gaming computer. And if it works out great, then you found yourself a hobby and potentially a future that you never knew you had, which here I am. Never thought that I would ever be in this position. So I just think it'd be a really cool way to kind of show you all some of the things that I learned along the way, and I am really looking forward to it. So make sure to join Air of Carthage, signing out for now.